E10 is embedded actually in the European Treaty in uh, the Article 154, and the word 10 comes from the 10 uh, trans-European networks, transport, energy and telecom. However, we have really little to do with our sister programs as we don't finance uh, infrastructure or don't finance research. Where E10 really comes uh, into the place is the deployment of the actual research uh, results and the uh, help to come and make those uh, research results actually work and uh, be deployed uh, and work as an e-service. The objective is of the program uh, is to implement those electronic services that are in the public interest. So we're looking at um, projects and we're looking at e-services that are trans-European, meaning that they're deployable at least in two member states. And we mean trans-European, we actually mean that they are they're possible to, do, to be deployed in terms of cultural, coming over cultural barriers, coming over language issues or regulatory issues. And we try to manage to have these projects um, be deployed, as I said, at least in two member states. We also make sure that these projects are inclusive or at least not exclusive, um, and that they are interoperable and trustable and secure. Also, our projects, um, as I said, have come, have come over the, the stage of a research project and now ready to be tested, to be piloted and, and deployed. We've talked about, also a previous uh, presenter, it's a program of E10 is within the uh, current Europe Action Plan and we'll be looking at the I2010 uh, initiatives and the third pillar of that that my colleague probably talked about yesterday. The scope of E10 is rather uh, wide. We're looking at projects in terms of, uh, as I said, deployment, but the themes uh, cover a wide range of uh, different categories. We have projects in e-health, in e-government, e-inclusion, e-learning, services for SMEs, and trust and security. The way we operate is that we every year produce an annual work program that defines the program of the specific year. For 2006, we're looking at the early uh, uh, early year next year when we'll be publishing that and later on during the year we always publish uh, open calls for proposals and if, if necessary also calls for tender. These proposals are then evaluated by external uh, evaluators, experts and they're ranked in terms of their merits and uh, up to the availability of our budget. Our budget has been around between 42 and 45 million euros a year and this is what we're looking at also for next year. Our projects, currently we have about 100 projects that are either running or to be negotiated. Uh, typically they would run for 18 months and would be funded by about uh, 1 million euro on average. We must uh, admit that we have managed to really integrate the new member states, already not so new. Um, and we're also looking at giving the possibility to uh, Bulgaria and Romania to participate, as well as possible candidate countries for the moment, Croatia and Turkey may also participate if they um, send a special request to the Commission, as well as uh, the EEA or Western Balkan countries may also eventually participate upon request and upon fulfilling the legal uh, criteria. Where ETAN comes into the, uh, to the place, or to, where ETAN comes uh, with its uh, value added is uh, in terms of project phase is really after the research. Once you have done a research and you have um, a prototype um, and you want to test it, you want to make sure that it actually works. We heard it yesterday from one of the project presenters that they now really want to go ahead and trial it in several countries. That's where E10 can really help uh, to help with the market validation testing both locally, regionally or nationally. So most of our, uh, some of our projects would fall into this uh, project phase, but also some of our projects really help uh, the actual deployment of a service. When the testing has already been done, we know it works in one country, and now we would like to go ahead and deploy it uh, Europe-wide. So for that, we typically have projects that run for about 36 months, and those would fall under the initial deployment phase. So we finance, we co-finance projects that uh, will actually try to replicate one good example that worked in one country and see whether it works across Europe or several member states. And so these would be the main milestones where uh, for the projects, basically when you have a service to be tested, you may come and run a market validation project. 
uh, and finish it with a business or deployment plan and then try to deploy it and come up with a real final uh, sustainable deployment plan. Just a few figures about E10. Um, since 2000, uh, we have uh, funded over 180 projects. As, as you can see, as I said, we have a good mixture of all kinds of uh, themes and they're sort of uh, all around the, in proportionally uh, the same amount, mostly government or SME projects. In 2004, uh, we bu the budget we had was around 42 million euros, and all the 250 proposals were handed in. After a very thorough evaluation process, we've selected uh, 47 of those that went on further negotiating. And as I said earlier, and also coming out of these, uh, this uh, last uh, or 2004 call, most of the projects would get a funding around 1 million euro. Typically, they would have about seven partners from all different member states, and I say also new member states. And some of the partners, or about 30% of the partners, would come from the public sector, and some, a good third of it also from uh, SMEs. For 2005, our budget was around 45 million euros. I can't really say much. The call uh, was published in February, finished in May, and the evaluation took place in June, July. And we're just about to start negotiating, so it's little I can say about the exact number of uh, projects passing. What I can say is also, as I said, for 2006, we're planning to publish a call that will be announced somewhere within the first uh, or second quarter of 2006. What I thought to also show you would be just a few uh, examples of projects so that you get a good feel on what sort of projects uh, do we talk about. You heard also yesterday uh, about RISER, that's an e-government project running within e and also another project that will be uh, negotiating with e in the coming weeks. And you will also have the opportunity this morning in the par parallel sessions to follow a few presentations from e projects that are in the area of e-government e and e-learning. So I just thought to show you a few others so that you have a good idea of what they actually do. One of them is called ePOL. It's an e-government project. It started in 2004. The idea is to test and market validate an electronic polling service that would allow any, any of us, any of you, to be able to vote remotely or from anywhere we are. So what, we've, what they were trying to test, and uh, luckily they had a very good uh, commitment and support of the Italian and French Ministry of uh, Interior Ministries. And basically they tested uh, this polling, it's a polling booth that actually can move and uh, can be used anywhere you are. Uh, they tested it in, uh, in Italy, in a local in a national referendum and in France, uh, at the university elections and also at the uh, con EU constitution referendum. Hopefully the outcome of the institution has no impact on the outcome of the project. The project is running very well and has, uh, the actual um, service has been successfully tested. And as you can see, this is a project example that had a research background from an ISD funded project and came to E10 to try and see and validate whether it can work in practice. I'm not going to talk about this one too much because we've had some examples. Your question was whether can it work in other uh, countries? Uh, and this is about the health insurance card that we talked about. And we don't know if it can work, but what we can help is, is that we can involve member states to do the testing. And it's a, it's a project that involves 10 member states all around Europe. So at least the testing um, can be done and it's running successfully. Another uh, e-health project, uh, and we have several of those, that is uh, testing telemedicine. Uh, the Medaship project uh, was aiming at testing a satellite uh, tele, uh, video conferencing telemedicine services for um, uh, cruise ships, basically for um, cardiology and ultrasound examinations. And this is also helping any, uh, any mobile or any remote area uh, in terms of telemedicine. Another e-learning project, ProLearn. It's a project for um, helping in this case specifically medical doctors uh, in their lifelong learning, both by offering courses uh, online and also by doctor enabling doctors to find the specific courses they may need uh, for their continuous professional development. And finally, another example, this is an area of e-inclusion, seniority, uh, is a project that is um, helping 
uh, elderly people who are in elderly homes uh, keep contact with their, uh, with their families through uh, broadband video conferencing. Uh, the idea of the project and the technology was set, basically they came to E10 to find investors uh, to be able to deploy it in, in uh, several European countries. And as you can see, it's been tested in uh, some of the southern European countries. So what I can offer you is basically you can check all the information on our website, what is available. As I say, as of early next year, we should have the work program ready for 2006. And later on, first or second quarter, we will have a, a call for proposals, most probably. Uh, you can also sign up for our newsletter to be informed about the uh, most important news and also find out more about running projects so you can get a better idea on how this could be of help to you. And for those of you who are still interested, we're welcoming you in the morning parallel session to find, about, find out about more about some running ETAN projects. Thank you very much.